it is time for us to get into our powerful, radiant essence, living by our own values, living by spiritual laws and principles. Because I got to tell you, they're pretty miraculous and they're pretty exciting and they're so glamorous. You've gotten great at divine working, but what about divine living? Welcome to the Divine Living Podcast. I'm your host, Gina DeVee. You're not alone in wanting more. And here at the Divine Living Podcast, you can expect to be part of conversations from women like us who unapologetically dream big and are obsessed with manifesting our most fabulous lives. The conversation starts now. What's up, Buttercup? Okay, we are going for true, deep, profound, real, actionable, and what do I want to say? Like life-changing levels of transformation today. That's right. Enough with the tossing, the quotes, and the memes around, and enough with the hoping, and the wishing, and the wanting, and the waiting. I think that it's time for us to get real with ourselves about our power, our capability, our dreams, this short time that we have here on the planet, and get on the other side of any form of lack or limitation or plateau or, I don't know, the stuckness that any of us can get in when we're exclusively kind of living in our own lives. So it is my great joy and honor that you are here today. I want you to just sit back, relax, and enjoy as I am here to pour into you, remind you of your greatness, remind you of what's possible, share with you some things that I personally have been getting so much clearer with and so much deeper with today, and I pray it will be a blessing in your life. But first, we are going to start with a prayer because, you know, if God it's all things are possible. I'm going with God. All right, let's pray. Ah, dear God, we are coming to you for a breakthrough. We are coming to you so that this incredible, high vibe, gorgeous, talented, generous, giving, soulful, hardworking community of women gets to the next level, gets to the next level of consciousness, receives all of the abundance and joy that she is meant to receive so that she can give at a greater level, shine her light even more and make a magnificent difference in the lives of millions. And we pray this believing, amen. Okay, so I've been talking a lot um, in my Q club about like, okay, we know spiritual principle, but we don't necessarily always live by it. And I find that for us in the women entrepreneurial, women's empowerment, spiritual feminine community here in Divine Living, we can know this stuff, but not necessarily live by it. And here's how I know, and this is myself included, P.S. I am on the journey with you always. We all know our thoughts create our reality, right? We all know that we are powerful. We all know that we are capable. We all know that you can't solve the same problems from the same level of consciousness you were at when you created them. So then, if we know this, why would we feel anxiety? Why would we stare at a ceiling at 2.30 in the morning wrestling with fear? Why would we experience any form of lack? Why would we doubt ourselves? Why would we become afraid that, I don't know, someone is better or more worthy or that it'll never happen for you or that you can't have what you want or that the manifestation will never take place? Or if it does, it's going to take a long time. It's going to be really hard, blah, blah, blah. It's because we're not living what we know. And I came personally face to face with this one recently in one of the meditation retreats I was in because it was like, wait a minute, I have fear. I've got anxiety. I've got stuck places in my life. 
and I believe that my thoughts create my reality. How can I believe, like actually believe that my thoughts create my reality and even let myself get to a place of any form of bleakness or depression? How can I be in fear if I know and am living by I am powerful, all things are possible, all the rest, then, then what's this about? And I had to get really honest with myself. It's about healing. It's about like really healing the places within and identifying and becoming aware of so that they're not in my unconscious that that's what blocks. I think that most of us that have done the work, we don't necessarily consciously walk around saying, I don't have what it takes. Um, that can't happen for me. Um, I mean, I like, I know it like it kind of bubbles up or like, but I think that it's more in the unconscious vibe that we give off. Like, I don't know. I don't know about you, but I don't walk around saying like, I'm really insecure. I'm not confident in myself. I mean, it's just, it's not what I walk around with my internal narrative saying. And yet we can see that the places where we aren't confident, aren't feeling whole, it's an, actually, it's an unnatural way of being because our natural state is wholeness, confidence, joy, exuberance, wisdom, power, capability, courage. Like that's who we naturally are. And then when we get into these places of overwhelm and anxiety and fear and lack and tightness and frustration, part of why it feels so awful is because it's so unnatural to who you actually are. You and your pureness, you and your wholeness, you and your greatness, you don't need to be defensive. You're not defensive. You don't need to be overworking. You know you have a spiritual connection that's going to bring your good to you. You don't have to think that the opportunities aren't there or that you have to be the one to do everything and all the martyred stuff or the princess stuff, like something's wrong with you because your life isn't perfect. And so I wrote about this in my book. Masculinity is about giving. It's in chapter three, P.S., for those of you who haven't read it. Masculinity, all the logical, the linear, the tangible, the concrete, the, the thinking, the doing, the initiating, the providing, the protecting, the stuff that all of Western culture is addicted to, obsessed with, won't even listen to anything else. Ultimately, Empowered masculinity is about giving. And there's masculinity within both male and female. And then femininity, what is femininity? Well, femininity is about, it's your intuition. It's your creativity. It's your spiritual connection. It's about being, not doing. It's about feeling, not thinking. It's about your vibration and life that you are just giving off. It's your essence. It's your energy. And ultimately, femininity is about receiving. Okay. So when you go and you take a look at what has you feeling any form of less than, less than happy, less than joyful, less than grateful, less than confident, less than powerful, it all comes down to an injured feminine instinct. You, the, your injured ability to receive. Meaning, if we are created whole and powerful and our natural way is to call in opportunities and be a blessing in people's lives and there's like this beautiful, dynamic, magnetic flow, if that is not occurring, then there's an injury in the feminine part of you. And there is femininity in both male and female. And so the thing that I've really been waking up to 
even more so because I already I woke up to it because I wrote about it in my book but I'm really diving in more deeply for myself clients etc women in the Q club is it the only reason we are not receiving what we desire in life is due to our injured feminine instinct well if something's injured what must happen we must heal it we must heal it and I know a lot of us have been to therapy forever and we've done the healing work and this and that and the other and we were tired of it and the the whatever the mother story the father's story the this story the man story the this isn't about that this is a it's not about like unending processing forever there's a place for processing I'm a former psychotherapist I have real reverence for processing the invitation that I have for you today is to truly heal. I think that too often times we're, we're like limping through life psychologically or emotionally because we've just kind of gotten used to it. Uh, incredible, incredible client of mine uh, had these horrible migraine headaches for almost like her entire life. And she never talked about it because she just she got tired of it. She just thought everyone would think that she was always this downer, always talking about it. she was but she was always in pain. She was always sick and it's just how she did life. She learned how to kind of manage it. She wouldn't schedule morning appointments and or morning flights and but like she went through motherhood, marriage, career just like almost every day in this agony. And on a certain level, though you're in pain, you get used to it. And yet, real healing is available. Physically, emotionally, financially, psychologically, spiritually. And that comes from getting ourselves to the higher level of consciousness. Because clearly for all of us, Everything that's going on in our lives got created from the consciousness we were at when we created it. So when I became clearer on this, I was like, right, right, right. It isn't necessarily easy, but it is simple. Right? And so really taking a look at your life about where are you in what areas specifically are you going to heal so that you get so great at receiving? So great at receiving your worth. So great at receiving wealth. So great at receiving opportunities. So great at receiving clients. So great at receiving love. So great at receiving a physical healing. So great at receiving community, so great at receiving fun and joy and adventures in your life, so great at whatever it is that is on your vision board, getting your book deal, being on the TV show, selling out your programs, filling your events, whatever it is. The answer is to get great at receiving so that healing those injured feminine instincts. And here's what I can promise you. You're not going to heal from overworking. You're not going to heal from avoiding. You're not going to heal from doing, doing, doing. Joe Dispenza calls that, it's like, you're not going to change anything working matter to matter. It's about getting to that higher level of consciousness. And you get there when you heal. When you just own all of those pieces of yourself, when you're making the connections, when you're shining the flashlight into those corners that you just wanted them to go away or stop making so much noise or stop ruining your life and just you thought you could override the system. But the beauty of it is all of you matters. And all of these little Areas that you might think are little, it just takes a little kink and a hose to stop the entire water flow. So what if you giving time and attention to 
yeah, 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 that was in the past. That was when I was six. That was when I was 16. It's like, I, I've I got other things. I'm, I can't focus on that anymore. Well, matter to matter doesn't work. And I just want to say something that might not be even real popular out there in the whole success circle vibe. Just do it. It doesn't matter how you feel. Just, just do it. Massive action. I'm not doing it that way. I'm listening. I'm looking. I'm feeling. I'm sensing. I'm cultivating such a knowedness about myself and a, and a deep congruence with my faith so that I am living life by design where I'm not just collecting things and desires and stuff that I want but that the way in which I am drawing opportunities and experiences and joy and blessing to my life comes in a very natural miraculous way and I'm seeing this come in more and more and day by day with every injured feminine instinct that I heal. I know. It, another one happened today. It's that I'm just bringing care, compassion, attention, intention. And this is fierce. I got to tell you, this is not for the faint of heart. But this is for the women who just are so unavailable to... Not, not do it the same way. Like if doing it the same way is what's necessary, they're out. Like those women. There's just an awakened, illumined mind in the hearts and minds of feminine women. Women who are revering the feminine. Even women don't even feel like they're that feminine. But they're just like, feminine show up for me. Feminine guide me, feminine lead me, because it's in my feminine, like, I don't want to do life without creativity. I don't want to not have a crystal clear intuition. Because without that, I keep making the same mistakes, and, and, and that's expensive with both time and money. I know that there's an intuition inside of me, so I'm going to develop that, and I'm going to let that lead and guide me. I know there's a spiritual connection that I have access to. And to the degree that I'm not receiving that, I am going to heal my injured feminine instinct so that I can see things not as they are, but as they will be. So that I'm not getting distracted with depression and anxiety and any form of lack because it doesn't seem like that thing that I desire is going to happen. Because instead, I've opened the eyes of my heart. And the eyes of my heart can see beyond what's occurring in the natural. This, this is the way I desire to do life, not by some dead old white man's rules. That this is what you do with money, and this is how you make money, and this is how you spend your day. I don't know, maybe, maybe my Wednesday at 2.30 isn't meant to be spent behind a computer. Maybe it gets to be wherever my heart is going to be most open. Maybe working all the time isn't the fastest, most effective, most sustainable way for success. Maybe I could really create that incredible million dollar, hundred million dollar, billion dollar business out of pure desire out of pure joy, out of pure passion. Or maybe I could sell my business or have my business function at the same level but work half the time and travel more. Like getting out of the box and into your joy. Really allowing abundance to flow to you. Maybe you will stop telling yourself that you're fine being single. Nobody needs you to be fine. 
you deserve to be in your, your ultimate joy and glory. And if that includes being in partnership and companionship and in romance, then you own that for yourself. Because I got to tell you, when I've been looking in my heart, I can see the places that I've acquiesced. I can see the spiritual bypasses I've done where I'm like, well, if God meant for it to happen, it'll happen. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. That right there is an injured feminine instinct. Nobody with her feminine instincts intact says that. A woman with her feminine instincts intact says, I decree and declare, and I'm calling this into my life, or can simply identify, that's just not for me. But the longing and the wishing and the wanting and the hoping and the, mm -mm, enough with that. Enough with that. It is time for us to get into our powerful, radiant essence, living by our own values, living by spiritual laws and principles. Because I got to tell you, they're pretty miraculous and they're pretty exciting and they're so glamorous. So glamorous. So when we get out of relying on all the masculine stuff, and convincing ourselves that the logical linear way is what's actually right. Mm -mm. That's just letting our real femininity get beaten out of us. And that's what happens when anyone has an injured feminine instinct. So today, we call for a spirit of healing. We call for a spirit to heal us in the ways that we don't even know to ask to be healed right now. We call for our natural, powerful self to be reunited. And in any of the ways that we have gone unconscious, in any of the ways that we have given ourselves away, our power away, our bodies away, our brilliance away, our time away, our creativity away, our confidence away, we reclaim in this moment. We reclaim the parts of ourselves. We prioritize our well-being, our strength, our virtue. We don't make our desires wrong. We trust and know in our spirit that they were given to us by the divine. And now we open up to the real surrender, not the giving up, but the surrendering into truth, the surrendering into wholeness, the surrendering into light, the surrendering into the miracle. May we stop relying on our natural eyes and get so great at healing that injured feminine instinct that we all can always see things not as they are, but as they are meant to be, as they will be, as they are on the spiritual level, and they soon shall be on the material as well. This, this is the great invitation for queens moving forward as this world opens up, my love. This, healing our injured feminine instincts. So if this is something that you're curious about, if you would love my mentoring on, if you want to join me and a really, really gorgeous group of women, I want you to check out the link in the show notes. I'm so committed to living the sweet life. I'm devoted. I don't have it all figured out, but I'm going to be sharing with you what I do and 20 years of you know, being a psychotherapist and doing transformational coaching work. I know what it is to heal for myself personally and for thousands of women around the world. We deserve this true healing so we can get on with our lives and get on with our callings and our purposes. So I've put together this six-month adventure. It starts at my home in Miami in June. We're going to gather. We're going to look into each other's lives and hearts and look at the bigness of what's possible. Not what's not working in the old or the fears or any of that. 
And then we're going to go in and really identify the injured feminine instinct for you so that you can reclaim and recapture. And we're going to continue the conversation on a yacht as queens do. And then in deep sisterhood, in deep connection, in deep personal radical responsibility and accountability, we're going to hold ourselves and each other to this luminous high standard of epic transformation that only comes from the spiritual, only comes from the divine. And week after week and month after month, we're going to be there seeing each other, holding space for each other. I will lovingly reflect to you the ways that the up level can take place. And so will the wisdom in this high level group of women also. And then as we journey forward, we will complete in Italy for white truffle season, because if you have not done white truffle season with Gina DeVee in Italy, I got to tell you, that is La Dolce Vita at its finest. So applications are due May 20th. Uh, if this is you, prioritize yourself. Where there's a will, there's a way. Um, the finances are, the, are what the finances are. The more important piece is is this for you? If I'm your mentor, if this is the adventure, if, if you know that this is your time, then this is one way to get out of lack because I can promise you that pe people always ask, my friends always ask me, how do, you, how do you get all these high-end clients? Who pays you these rates? I said, not the wealthiest people. It's the people who value it the most. That's what I've seen over the course of the years is that people that enter into what clearly is a very high level environment they didn't necessarily even have the money at the beginning but they became so high vibe even in the enrollment process that they attracted the opportunity to them including the manifestation of the money so many people so many women have said to me gina just the transformation I went through getting into this, she's like, anything I get out of the program is going to be a bonus because I discovered my power and my purpose and who I really am and how much I'm capable of just by saying yes, just by investing in myself, just by moving those funds, just by getting that 0% card, just by calling it in or cashing in whatever. Like, I'm so in love with me. I can do anything right now. So if this is for you, check out the link in the show notes. I would, am doing interviews, taking applications, like I said, until May 20th. And if this is a right fit, it will be my absolute delight to warmly welcome you into this adventure. Lots of love. Oh my goodness, how much did you love, love, love this conversation? Please go ahead and take a screenshot of this episode right now. And I want you to tag me on Instagram and share with me what your biggest takeaway was. I love being in conversation with you, hearing from you, DM me. Um, and I really love getting what is the one big takeaway that you got from this episode? Let me know on Instagram.